In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use SOLIDWORKS to solve basic statics problems because I tried to figure out how to do it and I just couldn't and it took me forever. So I figured I'd put together a video to show other folks. So say you have a statics problem that looks like this. Um, 10 newtons, let's pretend there's no gravity. We've got a massless box. It's non-deformable, inextensible, all that kind of good stuff. Everything's in meters. Okay. And so we look at this and we say, okay, that's pinned. So that means that we have an AX, we'll call that A. We have an AY and an AX reaction force, um, no moment reaction. Over here, this is on a roller, so we'll call this B, and we'll just call this BY. Now, if we're doing this by hand, we can figure out what those reaction forces are. We can do the sum of the forces in the X direction, which is AX, so AX has to be zero. We can do the sum of forces in the Y direction, but that's just gonna give us a positive AY plus a positive BY minus 10 Newtons, and that's gonna be zero, which is great, except all that tells us is that AY plus BY is equal to 10. Yay, okay. So then what we can do is we can do the sum of the moments, and let's pick A, because A has the most number of unknowns. So if I do the sum of the moments about A, I see that 10 does a moment of 10 times three around that way. So that would be 10 Newtons times three meters. And then the other one is BY. BY is going to have a counterclockwise. So actually the first one's negative, negative 10 times three. The other one's counterclockwise. So it's plus BY times its perpendicular distance, which is six. I'm assuming you know what this is. If not, you got other things to do before you worry about putting it into um, SOLIDWORKS. So that gives me 30. So BY, oops, that actually worked out really nicely. BY is t five and AY is five. Well, that makes sense. So this is one of those things where you do math and get the most obvious answer, which is if you put something in the middle, um, the whatever thingy is evenly distributed. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, draw this box in SOLIDWORKS, then we're gonna figure out how to make all the attachments that look like what you're looking at here, and then we're gonna figure out how to run the actual analysis. So now we're here in SOLIDWORKS, and what we're gonna do is, um, if this isn't already open, I like to pin that, but we're gonna start a new part. This is gonna be part, random part, and we're gonna start on the front plane. We're gonna hit sketch, and we are going to pick a rectangle, cause rectangles are easy. We're gonna start at the center where you see that little like yellow thingy that's like, okay, you're on this point, and then we're gonna go pachoo. And I think by default we're in meters, but let's check. I'm gonna go to my options, and then I'm gonna go to document properties, units, meter, kilogram, second, perfect. So that's exactly where I need to be. So then I'm gonna do a smart dimension. So I'm gonna click this button over here, smart dimension. And I think I call that two meters. And then this got smart dimension to six. Beautiful. And it's exactly what I wanted. There's no funky little picture next to that. So I know that it's fully defined. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna extrude it because even though our, our picture is in 2D in real life, nothing is dimension only has two dimensions well except in math but for those purposes we're going to say we're going to go ahead and extrude it i'm just going to extrude it one meter just for fun um and i don't ever like it when it goes that way so i'm going to slip the direction so that the front is still the front and not the front of the back so it's not going to matter but you can go ahead and do that and then we have a nice little bar so you can go ahead and save it and take it from there i'm going to name mine boring box Ooh, wait i'm going to take boring box. Lovely. So now I have a boring box. Now, there's a couple of weird things that we're going to do as we're going to try to apply these forces. And that's what we're going to do next. So something that you need to start off with is over in your add-ins, in order to make any of this work, probably should have started with this, is you have to have SOLIDWORKS simulation. If you don't have SOLIDWORKS simulation, this isn't going to work. I don't think you can do it with anything else, but everything that I'm gonna do here assumes that you have the SOLIDWORKS simulation add-on, and otherwise, it's, it's, a, it's a premium add-on, so you may or may not have it. If you don't have it, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, I think like the student edition that you can download for free if your school has a license. So if you're working off of like a super duper cheap edition, you probably don't have SOLIDWORKS simulation. You'll have to use like a legit copy that someone actually paid for. So we'll do that. Okay, so make sure that you have that loaded. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to simulation and we're gonna start a new study. And we're gonna do a static study. So that makes things easy. And we're gonna call it um, fixed in roller. Maybe. There we go, fixed in roller. Okay, 
So the first thing that we want to do is we want to have a um, whatever force thingy on the top. Now here's the thing with adding a force. We want to do an external load. If I want to add a force, what happens is I actually have to have a place to put the force. So you see right here, if I try to do this, it's going to try to apply the force to the whole thing. Even if I do a selected direction, it's still going to go along something. So this isn't what I need to do. So in order to make this happen, I actually have to go add something else to the original drawing. So I'm going to go do that and show you how. So you're like, but I thought we were going to do something and now we're not doing anything again. I know. Okay. So we're going to go back to our model. So make sure you have model clicked. I'm going to select the top plane and I'm going to say normal too, because I want to see the top plane all nice and pretty. So now that I'm here, I'm going to go to reference geometry and I'm going to add a point and I'm going to click here in the center and let's see. I want it to be in the face, in the center of the face. Beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that point. Um, oops. I'm going to rename that point um, force place. Just like that. Now I have a place to put the fork. Force. <laughs> so I can come back to my, my motion study. If I go like that, I can see my force points. Now I can go back to adding an external force. So I'm going to say, oh, it selected force point for me. Um, now here's the thing is it's kind of weird. So I can't really reverse the direction. It doesn't do what I want it to do. So I actually have to tell it a selected direction. I think, I think this is, there's probably other ways to do, but this is the way I figured out how to do it. Oh, there we go. Sorry. I had to click that button. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put 10 and it's not the right 10. So never mind. Let's try this one. Oh, look, that's the right direction. So if I put in 10, I can see that I now have a force going down at 10. Now the way that I'm getting this to rotate, just in case you're totally new to SolidWorks, if you press on the scroll wheel on your mouse and you go like this, if you're trying to use SolidWorks without a mouse, it's just a very, very sad day. So don't do that. Um, I don't picture. All right. So now I've got my force. And the next thing that's relatively easy to put on is the fixed point. So I can go to fixtures, fixed geometry. And I'm going to say that this edge right here is fixed. Now you notice that there's not a, mo it's not fixed in a moment way. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, but it is fixed in the, um, in the uppy downy and lefty righty direction. So that's good. Now doing the other one is a little bit more complicated. Whenever I go to fixture, if I just try to put in another fixed geometry, I mean, it's going to work, but basically it's going to be overdefined, and that's not what we're doing in kind of a straightforward statics class. We don't overdefine our stuff. So I'm going to go to the advanced fixture. I'm going to make sure I'm using reference geometry. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click the edge, and then I'm just going to pick a surface, and I haven't gotten good at figuring out which surface I want, except I just play with it and see. So see, whenever I clicked this button here, that's actually the direction that I want. So I kind of lucked out. And basically what I'm saying here is I want to prevent a translation. So I'm saying zero millimeters because I'm like, no, seriously, I don't want you to move along this route. So no stuff that way. And I can say, yay. Okay, now you can see I've got my two here, my one here, my one here. And it's so easy and this is like a less than 10 minute video and this took me like three weeks to figure out. So maybe I'm just really, really bad at this. But anyway, I'm gonna run this study. Oh, I forgot to define my material. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and do, 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 oh, boring box. Apply my favorite material, plain carbon steel, beautiful. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna run the study and we get stuff eventually. So this is actually not the analysis that I want. This is stress. I wanna look at displacement. So I'm gonna right click and I wanna show displacement and then I'm going to zoom out or in a little bit out just like that. So I get a little bit better view of what's going on. I can see that I get about one times 10 to the negative six is the most displacement I have. So that's like way, 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 way less than a millimeter. So you look at this result and you're thinking, holy cats, like how much is deformed, but it's like totally, totally, whatever you call it, um, exaggerated. So I can go and I can click the away the deformed result and it's really not there. Now what I can do is eventually, if I can get things clicked, is I can go over here and I can click on my results. 
and I can say, I want to know what my um, thingies are. Where do they go? That one. Reaction force. I just want to see my reaction force, and I'm going to click here on this edge and update. And so there's my reaction force. You see I have basically zero in the x direction, basically zero in the z direction, and then the y direction, I have five newtons, which is exactly what I calculated by hand. I can come over here, and I can click on this guy, and I can update that one, and there's also my five newtons in the, uh, in the y direction. So basically, I just confirmed what I did by hand. It just took a little bit of time, but not as much time as you might think. So this is actually kind of cool, because you can recreate um, the solutions that you get on paper on the computer, which could eventually lead you to, you know, only having to do this on the computer whenever you get to the more complicated um, kinds of problems.